Hello. This is new, right? This is different. I'm not sitting in my bedroom for once. Um, I actually have a place downstairs, which is where I am right now, where I'm supposed to be doing my recording and have instruments and stuff. But we're here today to look at this beautiful, beautiful instrument. This is an Ibanez SR505 five-string bass. This should be a quick, stupid review on the Ibanez SR505 bass. I got this guy in 2018 from dun, 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 Musician's Friend, no surprise there. Uh, it was $549 at the time. And I was looking for a five-string to replace the SR205 that I had previously, which was, eh, I ended up donating that to a school, which is a good place for it. People can learn how to play on it. It was not up to the quality of this thing. Uh, this is a very good bass. I love the look of the feel. I, I've been a four-string player pretty much as long as I've been playing bass. I did, I did use this one live several times and it was a little weird playing live on a five string. It was just a, a different concept with the extra string there. It, it, you wouldn't think that it's that much, but it, it does make a difference. Let's look at some of the specs on this thing. Obviously, number of strings, five, um, solid body. It's listed as mahogany. Uh, it's got a bolt on neck. A Jatoba Walnut Neck. I, I'm pretty sure that's the only instrument I have that's Jatoba Walnut, yeah. Fingerboard is Jatoba. And as far as I can tell, that's gonna be something very similar to uh, um, Indian Laurel and Rosewood. It might be a little darker than Indian Laurel, more, more like Rosewood, but it's got two Bartolini Mark I pickups. Unlike a lot of my instruments, I haven't touched a thing on this one. It was good out of the box. I ordered this one online, Musician's Friend, just like I order a lot of my instruments. I didn't have to do anything at all. I, I think I've probably adjusted it two or three times in five years and changed the strings on it once, maybe. I'm one of those guys that just leaves bass strings on forever. Um, I like when they get a little used that's a personal preference. You know, I've, I've heard people say, if you're in the studio, change your strings every day or whatever. I'm like, I'm not changing my bass strings every day. A, expensive. B, I don't need that brightness so much. Now, speaking of brightness, this thing has all kinds of EQ on it. Uh, treble mids bass. It's got a, a mid switch that will widen or tighten the mid range. Uh, of course, volume and pickup blend. Yeah, it, it's got a lot of... Uh, um, tonal opportunities. There's a lot of sounds you can get out of this bass. Um, I obviously like my P bass and my jazz bass and they have distinct sounds. This one has, this one really has a wider range of sounds than um, even those two. But uh, um, it, it's different too. Obviously it's got the low B on it so I use it for a lot of the stuff that I'm recording that is a lower end. It's got 24 frets and you can reach every one of them. The neck itself, and it's obviously hard to see from there, it's very thin. Um, I know some people like a big fat neck. I like thin back necks. Yeah, my Getty Lee Jazz Bass, the back is shaved just a little bit and it's a really thin neck. It may come from the fact that I come, came from the world of guitars and went to basses and I just like a thinner neck. Um, I don't even particularly care for thick necks on guitars. It's interesting, the finish is nice. It's, it's lighter, it looks lighter in color than what I saw on the internet when I bought it. Um, it, it it's still beautiful, I love it. It's a really good finish with one little caveat in that it does not have a thick gloss. So it is susceptible to nicks. But there's a nick right here that kind of drove me crazy for a while. I, I was sitting on a stand, had another guitar next to it, and I moved and one guitar went and it just... So if you look, let's see. Yeah, that's the, the mess right there. It's not the end of the world. It's uh, it's used, man. I mean, it, it looks like it's been out and played. And I wish I could say that I got that scar from playing it out, but it was just sitting in here next to another instrument that fell over on it because I'm a klutz. That's what happens when you're a klutz. That's why you should, uh, it's better to hang them on the wall than have them sitting down on the ground. So let's start with our, uh, our rating here. We're gonna start with a five out of five. Out of the box, this thing was ready to play. That's a plus one. I had little to nothing to do with this thing out of the box. $550, I, I wouldn't expect to have to do a lot to it. Okay, it's Indonesian, where a lot of my instruments come from. 
you've heard before I've had some neck issues with Indonesian instruments. No issue with this thing at all, none. Finish is beautiful. There were no problems with it until I made a problem with it. I got what I paid for. I'm actually gonna give him a plus one for the finish. Pickups, plus one. I'm never changing these. You can get a lot out of these things. Um, between the pickups and the electronics, that's a plus one. It does have battery for active electronics. They're not active pickups. It is active electronics. And that's a plus three right there. We're already at eight of 10. Um, hardware, another plus. That's a plus one. These, I've had no issues. The bridge is beastly. It's massive and it's good. And I have no tuning issues at all as you should not have tuning issues on a bass. You got tuning issues on a bass, that's a minus one. It's not only does it work well, it just looks good. And I will go back a hundred times to looking good is very important. Uh, I would buy another one of these in a heartbeat. Sweetwater selling something similar to this. It's called brown mahogany now. Like, yeah, the same specs for $749. So this thing's gone up $200. Wow. Would I pay $750 for one of these? Yes, especially if I was gonna gig with it. You can gig with it or it could be a good backup base, particularly five string. I use it for studio work. It's there, it's always ready to go. Uh, this thing is just ready to rock. And again, it, it's got so much tonal range. I can dial in a lot of different sounds uh, in recording that I only need one bass for. It makes it very handy. There's just so many. This, it's a 9 out of 10. Yeah! It, it's, it's a 9 out of 10 bass. Um, I really don't have anything bad to say about I, it. I will never be one to give something 10 out of 10 unless it, you know, cooks breakfast or mixes a drink for me. It's, it's got to be so good and so over the top and so worth the money. Um, the fact that it's gone up $200 definitely does not give it a plus one. So we're gonna call it nine out of 10 and be very happy with that. You know, I, I'm actually a, a big fan of the Ibanez's sound gear basses. Um, like I said, I had a 205, I had an 800 that I liked very much and played out live with that thing in the 2000s um, before I got my jazz bass. Then it was my backup even to the jazz bass. I had an SR300, felt just a little cheaper than the 800, and I made a huge mistake and, and got rid of it. I, that's one of those that got away I wish I still had today because it's one of them I probably could have upgraded the pickups or the electronics and made it just a great backup or a um, you know, recording bass easily. Guitar-wise, I've got this Ibanez here, which is a 1984 Destroyer 2 DT555. This is the best guitar I've ever had, still the best guitar I've ever had. I bought it in 1985, one year used. And um, yeah, I, obviously I'm not gonna ever do a review on this because you can't just go out and buy one right now, but I might um, highlight it someday in a video because it's still, it's still one of my favorite guitars. And I got this Geo. Ibanez, which is cheap, and I will do a review on this one. I just leveled the frets on it, did a little work on it. I've uh, got to put strings on it. Once I get that thing back together, I'll be doing a review on it as well. But yeah, I, I'm realizing though, I need more Ibanez's. Yeah. I'll take suggestions too. I'm, I'm, I'm good with bases right now, but I wouldn't mind having another, you know, mid-range, somewhere between $500 to $1,000 uh, Ibanez guitar or two. Yeah. So yeah, we're gonna go nine out of 10 on this guy. It is. It's a beast. It, it's, it's a live player, it's a studio player, it's a backup, it's a first bass, it's, it's a great bass. And if this thing uh, disappeared on me, burnt up, was stolen, I would, I would replace it without thinking twice. All right, um, adios, enjoy. See you on the next one. Who knows what's next? I'm not sure, I just pulled this one out today because I felt like, ah, need to get another video done, so. Thanks for watching, stay cool, and um, yeah, let me know if you enjoy this or have any questions. I'm gonna go over here and finish this now. Quick, quick. stupid, stupid, quick. Quick, stupid, stupid, quick. Both. That guy over there said this thing sucks, and I say it's really good. Like, all over that keyboard. Life is too short to be commenting all the time. I got too much stuff to do, so. Hydration. Mm this water. Another glass has something else in it. Nobody knows. Say nothing. Casual. Yeah. Holy crap, but can you see what it says? Let's, let's check while we're here. Bang it into the table there. Good idea, guys. It's, um, it's not here, so you can't see it. Alright, what else?